Hi, I'm Billy from Greenwood Solutions. Yep, spreadsheet time again. Glasses, computer, and in today's presentation, we're gonna be looking at panel row spacing and how to calculate both from a trigonometry, yeah, don't roll your eyes, and from the CEC table that they supply. At the end of this, you're gonna know how to design a ground mount system from the perspective of the spacing or a roof mount system where your panels are on tilt. Hit that subscription button now and hope you enjoy. So as you can see, I have got my spreadsheet open and there's a lot going on here. So first thing is, we're gonna put in the length of the panel and gaps in mill. In this case, we're talking portrait, we're talking a single panel. So number of panels, one, yes. Now we could put two panels in. In ground mount situations, you do, in portrait, you can put two panels. If you're putting them in landscape, um, you can go up to four. We've decided to tilt this panel at 30 degrees. Now, in Excel, it's a bit funny. I can't use the sine function straight away, so I basically convert to radians and then to sine. So, you can see here the calculations. I've looked at the radians of C4, which is a 30 degree tilt. That's your design tilt. And then I go back down to here, where I take the sine of the radian and, be, and I end up with 0.5. So that figure allows me to calculate the height of the back of the panel from the roof. Now, if I scroll down a little bit here, you'll see the height of panel from roof in millimetres using sine is a thousand mil. Now, interestingly enough, if we use radians in the calculation here, you can see how the height is 47 mil higher. That's interesting. Now, location of solar system, please select. Now, what I've done is I've taken the CEC table for locations and I'll slowly scroll over here. And as you can see, You've got Darwin all the way down to Hobart. And what they've done in their infinite wisdom is created or calculated an angle tan altitude relationship, which is basically a multiplier. Now you can see that the closer to the um, equator, the smaller that multiplier is. In this case, I've, I'm looking at Melbourne. 2.091. Okay, so we slowly go back, sorry guys, slowly go back to this figure here. So I can actually, from a drop down list, select Darwin, Catherine, Cooktown. So effectively, data validation and just selecting this column over here, as you can see. So I've selected Mount Gambier, Melbourne, Laverton, Sale. It's this on the same latitude. The angle of the sun in degrees at 10 a.m. for Mount Gambier, Melbourne is 22 degrees, and the azimuth at 10 a.m. June 22nd for Mount Gambier, Melbourne is 30 degrees. Now, how have I got that? Well, effectively, I've used an X lookup, as you can see up here, that references what's in C8, this reference here, and then goes across to this table over here and looks at what's in L4 to L33 and then returns a result in K4 to K33. The reason I've, in, I've included is because on this side over here, I've done a separate calculation that allows you to input the azimuth and altitude yourself and you can look at the difference. So, let's go back. Now, the height of the panel from roof in millimetres is 1,000 mil. And you can see, this is a calculation of what's in C6, which is the radians to sine panel tilt calc, 0.5, and it multiplies that by the length of the panel being 2,000. Now, if we go to formulas and we trace the precedence, you can see what's being used. Okay, now I've also included a row space multiplier because this allows me to give a little bit of a buffer when it comes to the row spacing. 
So at this point, we, we know two things. Well, actually, we know three things. We know the height of the panel from the roof in millimetres. We know the length of the panel. And we know that the degree of tilt is 30 degrees for our panel. So we're trying to find, effectively, the minimum distance between the back of one panel to the front of the other. Now, in this area here, row spacing, radian reference, with the CEC reference table with multiply input. So what's happened here with V looked up again, then I've used the sign reference as well, because I just wanted to compare the two. So you can see straight away that the radian reference is a bit more than the sign reference, but the radian reference is more than the average, obviously the average reference here. Now, over here you can see another beige colored spacing distance with multiplier. So if I put my multiplier to add 10%, so 1.1, you can see it beefs that out. If I go over here 1.1, it beefs that out. Now that really should be a yellow because that's an input cell. So with this calculator allows me to go, you know something, I'm looking at the spacing distance with this calculator over here and this has given me an altitude of 22, 30 degrees, but this has all been done mathematically using sine and tan and radians and radians to conversions, etc. So you can see here that the height of the panel is 1,000, which relates to the height of the panel using the sine method over here. So our actual spacing distance here is 2143. And with a multiply 1.1, let's just change those back to one. So with this calculator, I can, cal I can select whatever row spacing I see fit. Do I go the smallest row spacing? Now, if I use the CEC reference table, that's what I'm gonna get. Do I do the radian figure? It's a little bit bigger. Or do I use the average figure? Or do I use the spacing distance figure over here done purely from trigonometry? Well, let's see. In this case, I have selected that. So we can see here, and there's another drop down list using data validation and a drop down list. And you can see the options are there. So with this side over here, I just want to see the, if by varying the azimuth and altitude, um, how much different it would be. But in this case, I've got the same azimuth and altitude. Now, the CEC have put in their own figures, but I want to check out to see if they were accurate. So I did find a website, and this is a very interesting website here. So I am looking, going to look at Melbourne. So we'll type in Melbourne. Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Okay. This is actually a great site. The year is 2020. And we go to June. And we go hit go. And that'll give you the current altitude, sun distance, solstice. But what we're interested in is what is the figure in June the 22nd, which is the shortest day of the year which the CEC references in their tables. That's what their calculation has done. So we go there. Now, if I bring that in there, and I love this. It's funny, it's a little bit counterintuitive because usually you'd think east is over there, the morning, but they've done it the other way. So you can see it if I go to 12 p.m. You can see that the altitude is 29 degrees and the uh, six degrees off true north. And we come down here, we go to 10. I'll try to get as close as I, oh, here we go. That'll do. And you can see that the altitude is at 20 degrees. Back to the spreadsheet, the CEC references 22. So it's fairly close and they give the, um, the azimuth at 30 degrees. When you do the calculations here, you basically have to subtract the 30 degrees from 90 degrees to get a figure to play around with for those who are interested in those calculations. So let's have a look and see. We trace the precedence. 
and you can see where that comes from. Okay, so I can go to anywhere in Australia and type in, let's go Townsville. And we can see the spacing of Townsville. You can see that's considerably less. Now, don't look over the, here because I haven't changed the, as, the altitude and um, the azimuth, which I'll do now, to 38 and 36. And you can see the figure it gives here, 1035. So the average figure is 1041 mils. You can see how much closer if you're doing the same array in Townsville compared to, say, Melbourne. It, it's, in, it's considerable. So the radian method uses zero, 1065. The, the pure CC method uses 1017, the average is 1041, and the method using pure trig uses 1035. Now, if you want to apply a multiplier for, for a buffer, and remember when you're designing ground mount systems, you have to allow for transportation between the rows um, for installation purposes, etc. cetera, if, um, in, in a lot of cases. So which spacing to use after rec correct and I'll use let's say 1035 for that and you can see off, off you go. So this spreadsheet also does um, an area calculation simply by doing some calculations on the panel width and the spacing between, what sort of gaps, your east, west, north, south pathways um, and then converting that into meter square and also into hectares. So in this case, let's say there's 150 rows. Whoa, that's a lot. And the number, number of panels in the row is 19. Width of the panels is 1,000. We've got a path in the north of 4,000 mil, path in the south of 4,000 mil. And the total distance taken up by the panel rows and paths north-south is that. And you can see, again, if I go to trace precedence, there's a bit of a calculation here, and you can see the calculation up there. Uh, I've got escape out of that, but you can see what's going on. I won't go through all of that. Spend some time, maybe pause the video and have a bit of a look and see what I'm doing. So I'll remove those arrows. Path in the east, 2,000. Path in the west, 2,000. So the total row length, north-south, with paths is 422 metres, and the total row width, including east-west paths, is 28. Now that sounds f fairly large. Didn't we only add on 2,000 mil east-west? We did, but we also said that there's a, um, a space or a row right down the middle of the array of 5,000 mil. Maybe we'll, we'll make that smaller, we'll make it 4,000. And we can see the total area here is 11,586 square metres, which is a total of 1.16 hectares. Panel wattage 400, size of system is 1.140. Now, I've done a little calculation down here also, um, the amount of water that can be collected based on rainfall in your area, but that's, that's for another presentation. So I found a SunPath program. Now previously I've only seen static pictures, but this one actually shows you um, where the sun is in relation to um, different times of the day and different times of the year. So if we look here, it's at 10 a.m. and I've tried to be, it's, it's in Melbourne, so you can see the, uh, the map. Now it is the day of the year, yes it's 2014, for some reason I can't get a more recent day, but it should be pretty similar. It's on June the 22nd, so shortest day of the year, and you can see here what's happening. So time of the day, and you can see what's going on. This is a great little program. So let's go to 9.30 and you can see, let's go back to 10 o'clock, and you can see at 10 o'clock it's around about 20 degrees and we had on our calculator about 22. Now, I will show the whole lot. So it's just a nice little thing. If I go 
If I go there, you can see if I'm going, here we go, you can see the sun path changing as I get towards the longest day of the year. If I go to 12 o'clock, you can see what happens. Great, so it's a good little one to ch um, check where your sun is based on your geographic location. Now, um, we'll go back to the sunrise. Uh, this is the one based on Melbourne. Just remember 29 degrees altitude. I'll go to the longest day of the year. Let's go to December and we go, go. Now you can see the difference. Look at the altitude. So obviously the sun's a lot higher in the sky. So your panel shading's got obviously gonna be less, but we designed for worst case scenario and that is a minimum of between 10 and 2 p.m. on the shortest day of the year. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions, glasses and all. Thanks for watching that presentation on solar panel row spacing and all the lovely mathematics involved. We hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please drop us a line and hit that subscription button. Thanks very much. Bye.